In the 90s, Playmates Toys made the deepest line of Star Trek action figures in history. My name's Keith, and I'm a collector working towards owning all 284. I've been a Trek fan for almost 35 years, and most people are sick of me talking about it. But somehow I've convinced my old friend Mike to review them with me on... Look at my Star Trek toys! Hello, and welcome back to Look at my Star Trek toys. We are talking, as always about Playmates' legendary series of four-and-a-half-inch figures, uh, the entire Star Trek collection in the 90s. Uh, so excited to talk about this week's collection, which is what I'm calling Alien Incognito. And what does that mean? That means it's our main cast who have to, for one reason or another, uh, surgically alter themselves to look like a different species it's great fun storytelling great fun figures how's it going mike i love that you use the term surgically alter yeah is that a specific reference i mean they've all been surgically altered it's not just a costume no no when you know when beverly crusher turns you into a romulan she surgically alters you oh, to see, be a romulan all right well this gets me excited then keith because as you'll There's note, no foam on the face and makeup. No, she does it for real. Oh, this is okay. So I'm excited because gen what's my general complaint? Your general complaint is that all the uniforms roughly look the same, which I really like. It makes me happy, but it does not make you happy. Yeah, I mean, the uniforms are cool. I think they're uh, at times ill fitting, uh, but you know, it's. Uh, Everything I wear is ill fitting. Tailoring is, is tough in the. Uh, general uh, never-ending vacuum of space. You know what they say? Mm, mm, that old saying. That old, There's no that old, gravity to hold it down to that keep, old to keep the pleats. Note. Yeah. Actually, it would help <laughs> men of a certain girth because, <laughs> like ourselves, because you wouldn't have that like, oh my God, is it showing my love handles? The gravity would just kind of like pull, the lack of gravity would just expand. I'd everything. want like a flowing moo-moo. <laughs> well, like, it just sort of floats around. I look like an octopus. That would be great. I think, I think, what I was trying to say before we got uh, tailspun was that this should make for some interesting characters that will scratch my itch for variety and uh, whimsy, perhaps. Yeah, there is a little whimsy in this, for whimsy. sure. Yeah. Well, uh, why don't we hurry up and get there? Let's take a look at our first figure. This is 6031 Data as a Romulan. Let's take a look. Beam Ooh, in here, Data. Data. So here is Brent Spiner playing Commander Data, playing a Romulan from the Next Generation seasons five, or Season 5, Episode 7 and 8, Unification, Part 1 and 2. Now, if you remember, this is also this episode that we got our figure of Spock from. Mm -hmm. Wearing a very similar frock. Yes, yes, the uh, the Romulan underground civilian clothes, uh, and they really like a rectangle. They love the rectangle, but uh, but yeah. So we have uh, so we have Data here, obviously with the forehead ridges and the pointy ears, and a different wig. But they've also altered his his pigmentation, so he's not yellow like Data. You know, so it's I have yeah, to say that uh, interesting to me is that generally my memory of watching TNG and also reruns I've seen on BBC America, uh, see, I never thought Data was yellow. He was more ashen, but that probably was just the resolution of the screens I was watching on. Yeah, I mean, he's sort of yellowish, uh, more than than straight ashen, but uh, it, it, it's tough. They actually tried a whole bunch of different things in the screen tests back bef when, before the pilot. Um, which led to some interesting variants on the figures because there were a couple of different things they were trying with the figures. So there is a, a blue version of Data. There's a Data with speckles. Um, we're both sort of prototypes on the figures that got released. So I have a speckled Data. Interesting which is, uh, that an Android odd. would need speckles in the first place. I don't, I don't know if they actually tried that as a makeup or that was a, an error at Galoob, because the, the original Galoob series in '87, uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely one of the one of the weird ones. So they, they tried a different thing, a few different things with Data. What I think um, also is interesting here, and it's it's depicted well in the figure, 
what I think is really cool of the design in the actual episode we're looking at here is that it, you know, you're so used to, I would, I would speculate that the Romulan forehead design doesn't really obscure the actor's face. However, if you were to do a side by side of, D of Data and this Romulan here, he really looks different. He looks like a d he barely can tell. If, if you hadn't told me it was Brent Spiner, I, I wouldn't have known it. Well, it well it changes the shape of your face adjusting the forehead there, but it's also the eyebrows, mm -hmm. and uh, he's not wearing his Data contacts, so they change uh, the color yeah. of his eyes as well. So this it, it actually there's a lot of different things changed there. Um, so it's and and Brent Spiner doesn't look as much like Data as you expect him to out of all of the makeup. Yeah, interesting, and I'm 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 wondering if this will follow through the rest of the figures we're going to look at today. Is that as a not? This is very tailored to Star Trek collectors because outside of the universe, I don't. If I don't know who Data is, then this isn't particularly special to me. Although I think it's a pretty badass figure, I would definitely. I definitely want to know the story behind this character. So I'm I'm actually would love to see this episode. I'm 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 interested already. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Well, and there's there's going to be another figure from this episode possibly um that is interesting as well. I mean beyond the one we're going to talk about next. Uh, but I love the they did a really good job with the detailing on his coat there. It really matches what's on screen. Mm -hmm. Um and they And what they about put, what's under it there on the neckline? Uh he Wearing the sort of like the turtlenecky thing, you can't quite see in that screenshot, uh, but it matches the cuffs. So he, it looks like he's wearing a a uh, purple mock turtleneck, which, uh, <clears throat> if you're wondering, ladies, I used to rock one of those in high school. No one's wondering, especially ladies. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, it's it's interesting. And actually, if you uh, if you hop over to Toy Cam, and we can we can look up his skirt a little bit. Keith, you we know, have a similar... uh, we've received a few emails, and we are going to get to all of your emails on, on a show one of these days, yes. but people have been, uh, crossover listeners have been wondering why there is no toy cam, uh, at least like two second sound effect. We need something to indicate we're going to toy cam, other than just us going, toy cam! Oh, I mean, I, I kind of like that. The, the, I think the, the live bumper is sometimes useful, uh, but if you look here... He, the uh, the skirt sort of cuts off the legs, which you mm. see sometimes with figures like this. But this one, unlike some of them, where it's very clearly sort of stump legs that they moved into the plastic, I think they built this around a regular pair of legs. Uh, but certainly interesting design. And of course, on these, you're actually you're making a single figure. There's no, there's no swapping out a different head and a different body like we were talking about with a lot of the uniforms. This thing is entirely custom to this particular figure. Almost would love to have seen, well, it is very well detailed in the casing and whatnot. I would almost love to see it as a, as a costume piece that he can take on and take off. Yeah, yeah, that would involve, uh, you know, probably paying more than five bucks for the figure. That's, that's your problem. Yeah, there you go. That overhead. <laughs> the overhead on these customs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I think we should move forward because we have a very similar figure coming up next. And that is going to be figure number 6032, Picard as a Romulan. Ooh. Here we are. Very similar setup, very similar design. Uh, they went with a with a different color tunic because they're civilians, so it's not a uh, not part of the uh, uniform. But here we see, you know, hey, what does Patrick Stewart look like as a Romulan? Because why wouldn't you want to know? As they eat, uh, I think that's plemic soup that they're eating on the uh, the screenshot there. Well, right off the bat, I'll say you can't hide Patrick Stewart's face. That is Patrick Stewart. Doing Patrick Stewart on the right, but there in the figure, I'm not getting. If you put my life on the line and said, "What famous actor is portraying this Romulan?" and showed me that figure, I'm not sure I'm getting Patrick Stewart. Yeah, no, I I have to agree with you here. Uh, the the Brent Spiner's face was much more realistic than Patrick Stewart. It it, it has some like essences of Stewart, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's it's the greatest face model. 
they've done here. And actually, there's also a lot less detailing in the robe. Yeah, uh, because and in the figure itself, you'll notice... Unless it's the just the angle you shot this at, but he looks like he has those monstrous hands that maybe are bigger than his head. He does have sort of ridiculously sized hands, and actually, let's uh, let's go to no jingle toy cam, and we're gonna take a look here at mm -hmm. his hands versus a standard figure's hands. They're much oh, bigger. Monster hands. They're monster hands. Why does he have monster hands? I don't know. That's very strange. Yeah, this I, one's, I, that that bothers me, Keith. I can't explain why it bothers me as much as it does, but it is troublesome that the hands are not to even remote scale. Now, I will say, uh, where the attention to detail is good, John Delancey, this is a Q figure, is very tall, much yes. taller than Patrick Stewart. And they actually got that right, but uh, Patrick Stewart, he's got giant hands. They're amazing huge hands. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah, very, uh, very interesting. Okay. But uh, but yeah, no, it's not the. Uh, it, it it's like you say, it's it's good as a completist kind of a figure more than this is like a badass individual figure. I think. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think we should uh, move on from the Romulans. What do you say? I think so. And, well, I, also, I do want to compliment your nice backgrounds here, Keith. You've, we're cha oh. changing it up a little bit, and it brings a yep. little, it's a sousson of uh, creativity. Mix it up. You know, I got a, got a new projector, Ooh. so I wanted to play with it. And, of course, I've realized that it's so much more difficult to set up the projector and do all that than just to put them in front of the television, which yeah. I'll probably do next time. Or green screen, <laughs> for that matter, and I could just screen them out. But, you know, it's, nah. that's, that's for off the air. <laughs> <laughs> We're just weird nerds who like playing with our new toys. Yeah. I, I need That's to be, kind of the I'm concept. playing with them remotely, so I'm just trying to be involved. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to be involved. The us story. All right. Well, let us involve ourselves uh -huh. in, I think, a pretty badass figure. This one is 64101. It is Cisco as a Klingon. Ooh, I'm in. Oh, this hell yeah. Avery Brooks, who couldn't really be any more badass, somehow they make him badasser by turning him into a full Klingon, surgically altering him for the Deep Space Nine episode, season five, episode one, Apocalypse Rising. And uh, yes, that episode is every bit as cool as the title and every bit as cool as this figure. This is from the Warp Factor Series 2. Uh, yeah, what do, you, what do you have to say here? Okay, so far this is my jam. You've mentioned detailing on the past two characters. Uh, once highlighting the jacket, once highlighting uh, his stature. But this has the detailing off the charts all the way around. The facial detailing, incredible. The, the, Kl the Klingon hair, incredible. We've got... Uh, the outfit here, which I'm going to encourage you to tell me a little bit more about, seems really well detailed and specific. Uh, yeah, this is awesome. this is Klingon military garb from uh, the Deep Space Nine era. So what's happening right now, which is, again, like the story behind why they're here is also part of the fun. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it, we are in the middle of the Dominion War. And it is like just shit's going crazy right and left. And uh, they are thinking that the leader of the Klingon Empire might have been replaced with a shapeshifter of the opposite side. So the Klingons and the Federation are fighting against the Dominion. But they're wondering, hey, is the leader of the Klingon Empire been replaced by a shapeshifter from the Dominion? And so oh. they have to infiltrate uh, the, the Klingon command structure to try to find out uh, if Martok has been replaced. It's so exciting. How do they then get them back to their normal visage? Well, it's the, it, they're being uh, surgically altered with, uh, you know, 400 years in the future abilities of, of uh, you know, it's just, just getting plastic surgery. Just very advanced plastic surgery. All right. Cool. I love so that. Even the, like, little, the, the, the bustling in the back of his, his vest there is cool. Well, that's his spine protector. 
because okay. as as uh, as listener Phoenix uh, Cage pointed out, that is the weak spot for the Klingons because most of the rest of their anatomy is uh, redundant. Two hearts, two lungs, two whatever, but only one spine, so they protect it extra hard. So, uh, yeah, really cool. I mean, again, part of this show is trying to convince you to watch, uh, you know, Deep Space Nine and all the good shows. But if this one doesn't say, like, I I might want to go take a look at Deep Space Nine, you know, I don't know what's wrong with you. (laughs) Well, that's that's a different podcast. Endless things. All right. Well, let us move forward to another Klingon. And this is figure 16465, Balana Torres, as full. Klingon. Okay, so uh, Belana Torres here from uh, Voyager uh, 113 entitled Faces, and this is a Voyager Series 2 figure. And uh, what happened here uh, is there's a a whole specific story about this uh, doctor trying to cure a disease and of course we we learned that uh, Belana Torres is half Klingon earlier when we met her uh, in her regular figure but in order to cure this disease they needed a uh, full Klingon DNA hmm. so this mad scientist person uh, split her into the full human and the full Klingon versions and uh, I should also point out that I've clearly uh, mislabeled the actor. It's not Avery Brooks. Avery Brooks has an unbelievably uh, wide range, but that's it, it, it's it's very much Roxanne Dawson. Uh, you know, details really really about the details here. Uh, but anyway, so this I, I mentioned before how the uh, some of the storytelling got into the intricacies of having parents from two different lineages, and. Uh, Bellana was was wrestling with all of this and then had an opportunity here because of sci-fi to split both of the halves of her and be able to have a conversation with herself. So her full human side is able to have a conversation with her full Klingon side and work through some of those issues. And uh, it was a really fascinating opportunity and what a challenge for Roxanne Dawson. Is that you pitching to me? Yeah, I'm pitching to you. That's 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 the handoff. <laughs> uh, I think it's awesome. Once again, the costuming really cool. Interesting, like mid calf or mid thigh cutoff there. It's almost like that's where they would stump the legs if necessary. Do you notice that? Well, it, it allows you to. Uh, well, here let's go to Toy Cam. So what that allows you to do is turn the feet. So she can turn out and she can turn in. But that's but not a, that's not on many figures. It's not on all of them. It's it is interesting that there are there are some that do and some that don't. Um, a lot of the a lot of the main cast will have that. So here, Janeway just beamed in, so Janeway can do it again. <laughs> okay. But uh, but our our last figure with Avery Brooks. Could, cannot do it. So it's a little bit figure by figure. And I imagine that these these legs here were stock legs that they just added the detail with and repainted. Mm, which okay. is probably why they came with the ability to do that. So, uh, yeah. So here we are. Full Klingon Belana Torres so in a boring does she gray get, suit. Does she get returned to half Klingon? She does. She does. Of course, you know, the the great thing about sci-fi is you get to do all these crazy things and then fix it uh, by the end of your 46-minute episode. Now, Uh, the the other thing I want to bring up real quick, and not to make a, you know, a mountain out of a molehill, but I do notice that they, you know, this is clearly a female figure. We know that we know the character. The character is female. Why do we, is she known for having this bright red lipstick or is that just sort of a, a paint decision that is... I uh, I have it. to I have to think that it would be a just a full on sexist paint decision. Okay. Because the uh, the character the actual on screen character is Klingon is definitely not rocking <laughs> that uh, that beautiful red lipstick, yeah. which uh, seems like a vestige of the nineties. Okay. Well, Remember the nineties? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. 
that's a good point though that is that is actually a, a very good detail and i didn't even catch that i also so, notice uh, i also notice and that we mentioned this before in our last klingon character that the hair is very well modeled now keith if you could go back to toy cam i'd like to see both of the klingon characters next to each other do they have distinct male and female different molds for the hair or are we Oh yeah, no, they they are definitely distinct because the uh, the scale of the face, the the Klingon hair kind of has to be molded into the regular face of the thing, so it has to be separate for each figure. Uh, you will frequently see, especially with Worf, you will use the same head on different figures. But I believe both of these were built custom, were modeled custom, including the hair. For scale's sake, could you just set them up standing up on the table? Yeah, I think sure. it's I, I think it's really cool that. They paid so much attention to sort of the the scale as far as character to character. Yes, they're four inch figures, but there is some flexibility there to uh, adjust for that. No, you're 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 exactly right. I mean, they're four and a half inch scale. It doesn't mean they're all four and a half inches, and uh, and it, it it's really important, especially when you get them all lined up, that they do have uh, a sense of scale, a sense of of size. And I think that's that's one of the strengths of this series is they bothered to do that level of detail. Now, Keith, if you wouldn't mind, since those toys are up and, and we don't actually get to play with the toys so much, could you have uh, Cisco as Klingon turn to mm -hmm. uh, the other Klingon and ask why she's wearing such uh, bright lipstick? Uh, yeah, I, but they're, they're doing it silently. <laughs> okay. So what you're they, saying is role-playing will not be a part of this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> all right i'll do cisco you do taurus okay why are you wearing that weird lipstick eyebrow raise remember the 90s i do and scene well done Ooh, well that that was great that was that was that was really good i can this see is... the view count skyrocketing oh my god you better smash that subscribe <laughs> <laughs> Oh. All right. Well, before you unsubscribe, <laughs> let's continue forward with figure 6034. And this is Commander Riker as a Malkorian. Here in his alien hospital jammies, wow. <laughs> this is from The Next Generation Season 4, Episode 15, entitled First Contact, uh, which, of course, you think, ooh, First Contact, uh, that's the movie. No, no they uh, reused the title of an episode for the best of the Star Trek movies, in my opinion. Fight me. And uh, from TNG Series 3, so what happened here was uh, Riker was uh, one of the reasons that they surgically altered themselves is not always at, in war. They, uh, because of the prime directive, what that means is they come across an alien culture that has not achieved the ability to travel faster than the speed of light, i.e. basically a technological uh, barrier that you have to pass before we're going to announce ourselves to you so that we don't unduly influence the culture and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, but they will frequently do research uh, on these various planets and species, and sometimes they need to blend in, and so they will surgically alter themselves and pretend to be of that alien species when they go down to the planet. And uh, the setup for this episode is Riker went down pretending to be this species and trying to, I think he was trying to solve a problem. I forget what the setup was. Uh, but there was an accident. And he ends up in the hospital. He's he's terribly injured and ends up in the hospital on the aliens. And so they're trying to operate on this guy. And once you get past the the uh, the, the facial structure and all of the sort of um, uh, uh, surgery they did to make him look like an alien, they look inside him like, oh, weird. All of his organs are weird. And so they're having the story of, oh, my God, it, did an alien crash land on our planet? What do we have here? And freaking out. So it's it's like the, the reverse of the discovering Area 51. We're the aliens in Area 51 huh. in this scenario. Yeah, there's a Twilight um, Zone like that as well. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a very, fairly standard uh, sci-fi trope. Um, but it's, it's very interesting because then you have sort of the ethics of how do you rescue Riker without giving away 
what happened as these doctors are discovering, yeah, this guy's not real. So he's lying. As, he's like, oh, I had a birth defect and so on and so forth, trying to work your way out of that. Um, the other fun thing here is uh, if you look at the screenshot there, yeah, you bet that's B.B. Newworth. Yeah, she is. As a, as a love interest for Mr. Riker, she uh, she's buying what he is selling. And uh, speaking of Broadway folks, George Hearn is also in this episode. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. So if, if you're a, if you're a Broadway nerd and watch the Sweeney Todd DVD from the tour with Angela Lansbury, he's Sweeney Todd, and uh, it's uh, he's he's great. So uh, yeah. So what do you think? I think it's pretty cool. I like the detailing in the uh, the facial scarring and beat upitude which is a word I just coined. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I also like, if I'm not mistaken, once again, it could be the angle that it's almost like his posture that's kind of messed up and jacked up here is emulated in the mold of the figure. Is Am I wrong? Uh, I mean, a little bit. I think it's probably because I just didn't, uh, <laughs> he's sort of staggering on the uh -huh, turntable yeah. because I didn't... Uh, I, I didn't didn't line him up exactly right, so he has a bit of a drunk Riker feel, at least in the video. <laughs> they definitely uh, paid a lot of attention to the the wardrobe here. The costuming is very well detailed, even the sort of <clears throat> asymmetrical nature of it. The mm -hmm. the gi he's wearing sort of is is well and, done, and the mock turtleneck, no less. Yeah, it's they're cool. really into a mock turtleneck. It's the beard. I mean, some of the facial painting uh, is a little less. Um, leaves a little to be desired if that makes any sense yeah well if you if we uh if you head over to toy cam and if you look at his face here I actually you can see it on the regular thing uh jonathan frakes has a much longer chin you know the space between his his bottom lip and his chin than they have on the figure there he has a very short it's it's it's, it's odd it's, it's just a little bit of a inaccuracy in the modeling there Okay. Okay. I think that's I think that's what I'm saying. Uh, also, I think the the you know the costume is a little plain. I like, but I like the hand. I mean, it, I have to say, as far as of the likeness, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good model. Maybe not the most exciting because it's not that drastic of a of a of a shift for him, I guess. Right. Right. Physically, but uh, you know, pretty good. I'm 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 pleased. Yeah, I don't. Well, I, not so much that I, I. Although I would like to role play a song and dance number with him and BB Newworth. I feel like that's just a completely different podcast entirely. Yeah. No. It it, it definitely is. But uh, hey, look. Anytime you uh, you make out with BB Newworth, like you know, it's it's not it's not all that bad. That's fair. So let's uh, let's talk about a different alien, and this one is a slightly different scenario, uh, which I will explain. And so it's a little bit of a cop-out, but it's still too much fun not to do figure 6033. And that is Jordy as a Tarkalian 3 alien. Tarkanian 3 alien. Ooh, looks like Tron. It sort of is like Tron. This is from uh, Next Generation 418 Identity Crisis. And uh, so the, the story here, this isn't quite incognito. Okay. Because Jordy is actually genetically transformed into this alien, which is invisible under normal light. Uh, but obviously, <laughs> he's got, he's got uh, it's a, under a black light, he really sticks out. Uh, and what happens in the episode is uh, they go to this planet. And the way the species on that planet reproduces is they genetically alter whatever shows up there and turns them into this other alien, uh, which is which is sort of weird. And so it starts out as sort of a uh, a mystery because somebody disappeared and they can't figure out where that person went. And the person went, they transformed into this alien, which is invisible uh, under most circumstances. So it's it's kind of a cool mystery show. But it also allows uh, LeVar Burton to uh, turn into this uh, weird-looking alien. I absolutely want this alien to host Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, does Absolutely. it by any chance gl- glow in the dark if you turn the lights off? Uh, it does not glow in the dark. Uh, Alas, that would have been cool. Totally missed opportunity. Too expensive. I'm looking at the, the, it's funny, the screenshot, it looks like it's just, he's just wearing like a nude nylon bodysuit. Mm-hmm. Is that accurate? No, that's, yep, yeah, that's pretty much what he's just wearing. <laughs> okay, that's funny. So the figure looks a little more realistic, I guess. Um, yeah, well, he's he's wearing a brown bodysuit to blend in with the rocks. Right. So that hopefully you don't notice that he's 100% visible if you <laughs> remove the, uh, the black light. Yeah, it's cool because they... It definitely feels like the mold is a pretty, it's just like a non-painted general mold they had with the alien feet and the face, I guess is pretty good. It's hard to really make a direct comparison, but it's pretty cool. I'm, it, it's it's a good look at like what a what a model looks like completely unpainted, really, if you just look at the, under the blue. Yeah, no, that, that pretty much is it. And then the, obviously they, they molded on the, uh, <laughs> the lightning. Yeah, well, yes, of course. But, but yeah. But if you if you look at the hands, you'll you'll notice that mm, it yeah. has uh, three fingers, not five. So they they definitely put some some of the work into the hands and the feet as well. He has yeah. sort of webbed feet. It 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 would be better if it was part of a pair though, don't you think? Well, that's a really good uh that's a really good tease. Good tease, good transition. Because we have something fun for our finale. And that is 65227. Guess what? It's still Jordy as a Tarkanian 3 alien. But this one's special. Folks. Oh, yeah. What do we have here? But the Toy Fair exclusive version of this figure that instead of the brown body and lightning, it is a transparent blue plastic version of this figure. This was from Toy Fair Magazine issue 14. You could only get it if you mailed in and bought the figure. There were, uh, according to Wixaman, which I don't necessarily know if is accurate, but I, I would assume so, there's only 15,000 of these made. Uh, but it's pretty sweet, and if you hop over to Toy Cam, Toy Cam, I have the original packaging. Now, when we saw the Seven of Nine a couple episodes ago, I told you that the Toy Fair packaging was pretty darn simple. And, uh, here it is. It's just a white box, labeled, with, uh, Jory LaForge in Identity Crisis, and, uh, inside it, the uh, the figure was in a plastic bag, and what came with it was this base, which is a Federation logo as opposed to the uh, communicator pin, which most of them are, and uh, this little blue plastic uh, choking hazard, which I don't really know what that's supposed to represent. I know there were uh, lots of uh, like transporter enhancement things, but it didn't quite look like that, so who knows? So uh, there it is in its full original packaging and glory. Can we get them side by side here? Sure can. Now, I have to say, for my taste, I much, much, much prefer the Toy Fair version. It gives a much more sort of ethereal alien-esque vibe and feels a little less nude to me. Well, for sure, of course. And because of it being transparent, you really do get the idea that he was invisible. Uh, so you, right. you can <laughs> take that. Take that, uh, you know, limited edition figure. Uh, but the, the fact that it's transparent really does add something cool to it and makes it unique. Uh, right. There is no other figure from this uh, from this line that is transparent. Yeah, he's he might be my favorite, actually. Toy Fair might be my favorite of the lot. Him and a half- Klingon or Cisco, Cisco as Klingon, yeah. Cisco as Klingon, yeah. No, super, super cool. So, uh, yeah. So, how how did you like our alien incognito figures? You know, I, I liked them quite a bit, and for the the reasons we uh, talked about up top, it gave us an opportunity to, for me, to learn a little bit about the lore. I do. I agree with you. It sounds like some of the creative decisions, uh, narratively, 
are really interesting and gave us, gave the actors a chance to sort of step outside their boxes. And then right. that, that analogy stands true to the figures as well. Whereas, yes, I understand why a collector and a fan would be interested in the, 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 the hero shot of our hero in their particular uniform. But this, you know, I can also see the fun in having multiple variations. So I hope that we can do a series like this moving forward. Oh, well, there's uh, there's lots of uh, weird alien stuff that we get to play with, Ooh. which we uh, will in the future. So uh, thank you for watching. Next week, we are going to talk about some of our favorite recurring characters from the next generation. So get excited for that one. And while you're ramping yourself up to be excited, do us a huge favor. Uh, subscribe down below. Uh, click the notification thing. I, 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 that's a thing, apparently. I just learned yeah, that. Apparently, it's important because everybody really is it, really interested in you smashing that bell. That the bell hit the bell for some reason, but yeah. uh, we'd really appreciate it if you would like to find us on Instagram where we post some other cool stuff. It's just at Star Trek Toys. You can email us at uh, look at my Star Trek Toys at gmail.com or leave us a comment below we're so, it's so great to hear from you uh it's great to interact with you uh and we will we're, we're, we're there we're watching it we're interacting so that uh, leave us a comment and uh, we'll happily chat with you uh other than that we will see you next week maybe with a few unboxings we'll find out this has been look at my star trek toys